Ronald Coleman, inviting you to radio's most dramatic half hour. Favorite story. We went out to Beverly Hills to see Jack Benny's neighbor, a man named uh, Coleman. Now, this Coleman is a fairly tough customer, and we had quite a time getting him to pick his favorite story. But after a tussle of some proportions, we finally pinned him down. Uh, this fellow Coleman loves to act. You know how it is with these actors. <laughs> Naturally, he picked a part that he can really get his teeth into. Yes, this week it's my favorite story, and I hope it's yours, too. It's Edmund Rostar's moving romance, Cyrano de Bergerac. With the assistance of Miss Janet Waldo as Roxanne, I shall endeavor to portray Cyrano. I believe that's my cue, and we're ready for Act One of Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> We will see if the play begins or not. <laughs> uh, I beg your pardon, monsieur. Uh, yes? I am new in Paris. I've only been here a few days. Uh, tell me, if you will, who is this man everybody talks about? This, uh, this Cyrano? Ah, my boy. You will soon find out. Uh, what is your name? Christian, monsieur. Christian de Nubien. I'm here in Paris to join the famous cadets of Gascony. Then you will be of our regiment. Oh, you will meet Cyrano, all right. You will see him perform here tonight. On the stage? No, my boy. Here in the pit, he's going to stop the performance on the stage. Oh, why so, monsieur? Mont Fleury is billed to play a great lover. But Mont Fleury is a ton of a man. Cyrano has ordered him not to play the part. <laughs> this must be a most unusual man, this Cyrano de Bergerac. Unusual? Oh, the most extraordinary of men. Poet, musician, swordsman, lover of life. And with all that, my boy, a nose. Oh, yes, you will know him by that nose. And by the feather in his hat. A white plume as stainless as the snow. Begin the play! Yes, begin the play! Uh, monsieur, uh, forgive me for asking so many questions. Oh, not but, at all. But tell me, who is the young lady? There, entering the box. Huh? Which, my boy? There. Oh, you have a good eye, my boy. Her name, I beg you. Roxanne. So lovely. She's looking right at you. Yes. How <laughs> oh, you stare, young man. Uh, tell me quickly. Is she married or unmarried? Unmarried. Ah! Yes, the play begins. But no sooner no. Mon Fleury actually dares to begin? Ah, happy the man who far from fashion shores all of nature leaves the stage. Cyrano! Now we shall see young man. Ah, uh, happy the man who is you, cut of fat. Have I not ordered you to stay off the stage? Go, Mon Fleury, who's afraid? Ah, uh, or oh, shall I come up and carve you into a sausage? What? Monsieur the Berserk? All the patron place. Ah, here, my friend. Turn oh. insult to the stage. Refund the money. Now, get your gun, customers. Hey, you there. Leave the theater. Why are you standing there? No reason, monsieur. 
You are staring at my nose. Uh, no, monsieur, I assure Does you. Does it amaze you? Your grace is mistaken. Does I... it dangle like an elephant's trunk? I did not even Or is know... it hooked like an owl's beak? Oh, if I'd only been smart enough to keep my eyes off it. And why should you keep your eyes off it? But, monsieur, I... You find it a little too large for your taste? Oh, no, 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 monsieur de Chirac. Oh, very small. Minute. What? Oh. My nose small? Oh, merciful heaven. My nose is enormous. Yes, monsieur. I will have you know, you snub nose, dullard, that I pride myself on it. Oh, of course. Such a nose is a sign of a kind, courteous, liberal, courageous man. Indeed it is. As I... for you, my boat is going to eject you from the theater. No, sir. Help! God! Help! Oh. Help! God! Let it be a warning to all who would jest about the center of my face. And if the jester is of noble birth, I substitute for my boot the sword. Steel instead of leather. In front and higher up. <laughs> well done, Cyrano, my friend. Oh, and now, may I present a new cadet, Christian de Neuviet. Hmm. Good evening, sir. A new cadet, eh? Yes, sir. Carry yourself with honor, my boy. Leave no insult, unavenged. Keep your soul in shining armor. Wear your white plume of freedom with an air. And keep your sword of courage ever at your side. Yes, sir. Uh, good night, monsieur. Uh, good boy, that. Oh, come, Cyrano. Dine with me. Oh, no, no, Le Bray. Well, why not? Because I uh, have no money. But, uh, the, the purse of gold you threw on the stage. Month's allowance, my friend. What foolishness. Ah, but what a gesture. Why did you do it? Why do you hate Mont Fleury? Two reasons. First, a bad actor, grunting like a pig over verses that should soar away on wings. Second, the fat buffoon thinks himself attractive to woman. I have hated him since he dared to smile upon... Oh, my friend, it was like a snail crawling over a flower. What? Is it possible that I should be in love? I am in love. You have never told me. Uh, my friend. Think a moment. This nose, which precedes me by a quarter of an hour, forbids it. And whom should I love but the most beautiful in all the world? Neither Venus or Diana are half so fair as when she walks abroad through Paris. I see it all. Roxanne. Yes? Roxanne. Then tell her so. Oh, now, look at me, my old friend. I've no illusion. Oh, sometimes on these summer evenings, I follow with my eyes some woman on her lover's arm, and I fancy myself too in the moonlight with someone, and I forget. Until I see the shadow of my profile on the wall. Monsieur. Sir, it's Roxanne's mate. Monsieur. Monsieur, Monsieur Jurek. Mistress Roxanne wishes to know where she can meet you privately. Me? She wishes to see me? Yes. There is something she wishes to tell you. Monsieur. Somewhere tomorrow morning. Yes. Yes. Tell me where. Quick. Uh, oh, Monsieur, uh, at, uh, at Ragnar's, the pastry cook. At seven. At seven. Until then, adieu. Adieu. Oh, La Bray, she wishes to see me. She knows that I exist. <laughs> now are you satisfied? Satisfied. I have ten hearts and twenty arms. I could fight anyone. Everyone. Bring me giants. <laughs> Ragano, clear your bakery shop. Get rid of all the poets and the cream puffs. For this morning, your shop is to be an arbor of love. Do you hear me? Ah, Cyrano, you're welcome. Because the whole town talked of your heroism last night. Eh? How you saved some poor poet from the mob. Is it true that you fought a hundred men single-handed? Oh, anything is possible, good baker. Oh, she comes. Quick, please. Anything for such a hero. Roxanne. Monsieur. This is a blessed moment. You uh, have uh, come here to tell me... A confession. Oh. Before I confess, are you still the same, Cyrano? The same 
good friend I used to play games with in the park when we were children. I remember those summers, Roxanne. You made toy swords from the tall reeds. And you made the dandelions into dolls. In those days, you did everything I wished. Yes. Remember how you would come to me with your hand bleeding from climbing, and I would take your hand like this, uh, oh. there no. Your hand bleeds oh. now. Oh, how did you do it? Such a little mother. How did it happen? Oh, last night, I... I was playing still... With how many boys? Oh, a hundred, perhaps. Oh, dear. Oh, now, tell me. Tell me your confession, Roxanne. Oh, it does seem like long ago when I could tell you so many things. I will now. Dear, no, I... I love someone. You? Oh. He doesn't know. Oh? At least, not yet. No. He loves me, too, but he's afraid of me and never speaks you... of it. Oh. I see him trying... He's a soldier. Yes? In your regiment, your company. My company? Such a man. Proud, noble, <laughs> brave, <laughs> handsome. Handsome. What's the matter? It's nothing. Just my hand. I... I love him. But I've never seen him except at the play. You have never spoken to each other? Only with our eyes. His name? Christian de Nivier. Ah. Ah, how quickly you throw your heart away. My child, you love fine speech, wit, poetry. But what if he is uncultivated, stupid? He couldn't be. He has such curly hair. His, his mind might also be curly. What then? Then I should die. Hmm. Why have you brought me here, mademoiselle? He is new in your regiment. He will be in danger. He's young. Look after him. Be his protector. Will you do this for me? Yes. Oh, you're a good friend, Cyrano. Tell him... Tell him to write to me. And the next time we're together, you must tell me about the hundred men last night. What courage. Oh, in the matter of courage, I... I've done much better Cadets and Gatsby, quiet, all of you. Quiet! I wish to speak to that young man. Careful, Christian. When he uses that code, it means trouble. Out, out, all of you. Christian de Neuvillette? Yes, Monsieur de Bergerac. I have a message for you. From her. Look, sir. She looks kindly upon me. Oh, oh, perhaps. Ah, you are a handsome beggar, aren't you? Well, listen to me. Uh, Roxanne expects a letter from you. A letter? Tonight. A letter? Oh, I'm lost. Why so? Well, I, I cannot speak or write of love. I... I do not have the words, the eloquence. Oh, you don't. I shall lend it to you. You will? I shall give you the words to say. I will be the wit. You shall be the beauty. Will you do it? But, monsieur... Will you do it? Listening so much to you. Oh, oh it's, a, it's a game. For a boy, it, it amuses me. Well, uh, what about the letter for tonight? Uh, here is one. All written. All written? Thank you, Christian. With your conquering charms and my pretty words, together we will make a dashing hero of romance, huh? Ah. And perhaps win the golden princess. I believe we're ready for act two of this week's favorite story. Janet Waldo plays Roxanne, and with your permission, I shall retire now as your host and turn up after a few bars of music as the swashbuckling gentleman with a fabulous nose, Cyrano de Bergerac. <laughs> Christian, my boy, are you ready for today's lesson? I have some fine words for you. No, Cyrano. 
I'll wait here for Roxanne, but with no help from you. What? I've had enough. For months, I've taken my words, my letters, all from you. From now on... I speak for myself. As you wish, my boy, as you wish. I shall certainly know how to take her into my arms. Oh, Roxanne is coming. Uh, Cyrano, don't go away. I know. Speak for yourself, my friend. Speak, Cyrano. Roxanne. What a lovely, quiet twilight. Shall we sit here? Yes, Roxanne. Talk to me, Christian. Tell me things. I love you. Yes. Now be eloquent. I love you. Elaborate. I love you. But you said that. Be poetic. Be your wonderful, lyrical self. I... I do not love you. Better? I adore you. Oh. I've... You love I've... me, I know. No, no, wait, please. I I was going to say... You adore me. Yes, I know. Now go away. Cyrano. Cyrano. Yes, Christian? Help me. No, sir, not I. But I shall die if I do not get back into a good grace. Shh. Lower your voice. More than you deserve, but we'll see what we can do. Almost dark now. I'll stand here under the balcony and whisper you what to say. Now, call to her. Roxanne. Who is calling me? It is I, Christian. Go away, please. Your speech is so awkward. You do not love me anymore. Roxanne. I do not love you anymore. I do not love you anymore. Because I love you. Because I love you. Evermore. Evermore. Better. Love is born like a child. Love is born like a child. And grows. And grows. And develops. And develop. Why do you speak so hesitantly? Oh, this grows too difficult. Change places quickly. Your words tonight come slowly. Why? They climb slowly in the darkness to the glowing light, which is you. Ah, oh, your words come more easily now. They have found their way to you. Even your voice is different. Yes, because here in the protecting darkness, I dare to be myself. Roxanne, listen to me. My soul climbs to your feet in the darkness. I love you, Roxanne. Beyond breath, beyond reason, beyond life, beyond love's own power of loving. Roxanne. Roxanne, your name is like a bell in my heart. And the golden sound of it is with me always. Roxanne. Always ringing in my heart. Roxanne. I am yours. A kiss. A Christian, be quiet. What is that you say to yourself? I I am scolding myself because I go too far. And so I say to myself, Christian, be quiet. Climb up. I grant you this kiss. Go. Go, Christian. Climb his. I stand alone in the darkness. And he climbs up for the kiss. Stop, even at night. Cyrano, I, I cannot bear to be away from Roxanne. Well, the war will be over soon, my boy. I want now, before this battle, to write a farewell note. To, to tell her how I feel. I have written one for you. Would you like it? Oh, yes. This letter. There's a teardrop on it. Huh? Oh, so there is. Well, I... <laughs> well, before it gets carried away by steam, I've made this note so touching that... that it even made me weep to write it. Listen. The cannon have stopped. That's our signal, cadet. Battle position! Time for right! There is bad news. What, Christian? The enemy's first volley. Oh, there is a letter. 
We found it in his pocket. Addressed to Mr. Shroxan. Lebray, my friend. Please see that she gets it. It's a farewell note from a man who loves her very much. Forgive me for disturbing your prayers. May I come in? Certainly, Monsieur de Bergeret. Roxanne is waiting for you in the garden. Uh, sister, one favor. I, uh, I must see Roxanne alone this evening. Promise me that no matter who comes to inquire for me, you will not let them disturb us. No one. Of course. I promise. Thank you, sister. Good evening, Roxanne? Still, no, my old friend. After 14 years, you were late for the first time. <laughs> I I was detained by an unexpected visitor. Did you tell him to go away? Yes, Roxanne. I, I said, excuse me, this is Saturday. I have a very special appointment. Come back an hour from now. Your friend will have to wait. I shan't let you go before dark. Perhaps I shall have to leave a little sooner. Uh, My weekly gazette. What is the news of the court? <laughs> the news of the court. Uh, Tuesday, the royal party was at Fontainebleau. Wednesday, Madame de Monglas said no to the Comte de Fiec. Uh, Thursday, Mancini was almost Queen of France. Friday... Madame de Mongla said yes. And sa Saturday... Sarah, now what's wrong? Oh, merely a touch of pain. It will pass. I know, my friend. Each of us has felt some pain. I have mine, too. It's here. In this letter near my heart. His tears are on it. Christian's letter? Yes. You promised me that someday you would let me read it. Here, my friend. Open it. There are only a few moments until dark. May I read it aloud? If you wish. Goodbye, Roxanne. I am about to die. My soul is heavy. Filled with love it has no time to express. How you read his letter. I remember your every gesture. The way you touched your cheek lightly with your hands, the whiteness of them against the gold of your hair. Hardly looking at it. And now I cry out, goodbye, my beloved. In a voice, a voice. My heart does not leave you for a single second. Even in another world, I, I will be the one who loves you. Loves you without measure. How can you see the words? It is dark, sir, no. It was you. No, Roxanne. I should have guessed it when no. you spoke my name. It was not I. It was you. I swear this to you. This letter, all the letters. No. And the voice in the dark, that was no. you. No. The soul was I you. never loved you. Why have you kept silent all these years? This letter, I, I have kept at my heart. I have loved the man who wrote it. It was yours. The tears were yours. Roxanne. And why do you break this long silence here today? Why? I, I... I was reading you the news of the town, Roxanne, and I, I did not finish. Today, at sunset, Monsieur de Bergerac was set upon by one of his enemies. Cyrano! What? Mortally wounded. Merciful God, Cyrano, is there nothing I can do? Too late, Roxanne. I love you, Cyrano. It's only in the fairy tale that beauty says... I love you to the beast. And I have been the cause of all your misery. You? I, Cyrano. Oh, except for you, I would never have known. 
duty. And I have loved but a single man. And I must lose him. Twice. Uh, oh, Sarah, no. Uh, no, 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 I want no help. I will not die lying down. I will stand, sword in hand, and fight off my old enemies. Hypocrisy. Lying. Prejudice. Cowardice. While I have breath, I shall fight. I shall fight them. I... 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 Lost everything. Fame and beauty. The laurel and the rose. But there is one crown I take with me. And tonight, when I enter God's house, my salute shall sweep the blueness of heaven with something I carry with me. Something unblemished and without stain. And that is... That is? My white plume. The white plume of courage. We have a radio masterpiece for you on Favorite Story next week. Impressions from Charles Dickens' David Copperfield. This touching portrait of a boy in 18th century London was chosen for you by one of America's most gentle wits, the composer, pianist, radio star, Mr. Alex Templeton. We hope you'll be listening. (laughs) 